Mark Medina of NBA.com with us as always from Los Angeles. And Mark, let's start with James as the big man here. How much more would Frank Vogel and his staff like to explore those lineups? Well, I think Frank Vogel will certainly explore that, but I think it's reluctant because the whole adage going into the season is that they didn't want to put the burden on LeBron James. And I think Isaiah Thomas in the previous segment hit it on the head of, you know, this is screaming of desperation. I, I think LeBron James has shown time and time again through his championship runs, finals appearances, that you don't bet against LeBron, but I want to bet on the team's circumstances where Anthony Davis is out for a month, uh, they have guys in the, out of the lineup that they haven't been consistent defensively or offensively for that matter. So I think in the short term, maybe there's some relief because Dwight Howard is out of this health and safety protocols and will be available against the Suns. But the reality is this, Matt, uh, DeAndre Jordan and Dwight Howard just haven't been good this year. Mm -hmm. uh, DeAndre's best years have been behind him. And Dwight, I think he still shows flashes of athleticism, but he gets in a lot of foul trouble. And so – You'd like for them to be able to pick up the burden, but so far that hasn't been a guaranteed thing. So as a result, I think the Lakers have to anticipate the inevitable. They'll need LeBron in whatever capacity, center or any other other four positions because of how good he is and how there's not really many other good alternatives. And even on those turn back the clock nights for Dwight Howard where he's feeling springy and, and spry, he's not someone the Lakers are going to run their offense through necessarily as they would with LeBron wherever he is on the floor. What do those LeBron at center minutes mean to the others on the floor, including Russell Westbrook? Well, I think it puts uh, more pressure, obviously, on LeBron with making, you know, defensive stops in the interior. And I think it also puts more pressure on, look, you have to have Russell Westbrook and other guys make outside shots and make plays. And again, this was part of the thought process going into this season with getting Russell Westbrook, having a playmaker that can reduce the burden for LeBron James. But that has come at the cost of having a lot of good perimeter shooters and also a lot of perimeter defenders. And, you know, I, I think that this has been an ongoing theme, but it's obviously taken a new development with Anthony Davis being out. Does this mean that LeBron has an even greater workload? Well, yes, it does. But I think that the bottom line is Russell Westbrook was signed on here with the idea from the Lakers and that he was going to make life easier for LeBron James and Anthony Davis in the events that either one of the guys are injured or you just don't want to tax a heavy workload uh, because of where they're at in their age. And so while LeBron does have a lot of responsibility, I think Russ has to take it up an even bigger notch to be more consistent. And the Lakers did get a little help, at least theoretically, on the perimeter this week with the signing of Isaiah Thomas, who's now played two games for them, a perimeter scorer, obviously, and Trevor Ariza, who finally made his season debut the other night. Um, they'll face a Phoenix Suns team with the best record in the league. They are dominating right now. Their last four wins by 18 and a half points per game. And they got healthier this week with the return of Devin Booker. What or who, if you can narrow it down to one thing, is driving this incredible start? Well, I think to simplify, I think it's the, the Suns culture, and that falls under the umbrella of you have a lot of good star players, a la Chris Paul and Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. Great coaching with Monty Williams. But, look, the Golden State Warriors a few years ago prided themselves on having this strength and uh, numbers identity. The Suns have that this season where, um, you know, they have guys like JaVale McGee and Jay Crowder and Mikael Bridges. Uh, you can go down the line. Um, of other guys stepping up in and out of the lineup. And the fact that you look at two main guys with Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden being out for a stretch of games this season, and it hasn't really affected them too much from a win-loss perspective, that shows that the Suns have been well-constructed from top to bottom and that there's a lot of good leadership from their head coaching and star players and a lot of buy-in from their role players. It is a very much a uh, recipe for championship success. Yeah, JaVale McGee in particular has been a very impactful signing for that team. And they are five wins better than at this point last season when they were still just getting to know each other as a team. It's easy to also forget that aside from Chris Paul, the Suns are a fairly young basketball team. Where do they think there might be room for improvement as good as they've been? 
Well, I think that they hope that they satisfy the room for improvement with getting JaVale McGee. Look, I talked with him earlier today, and he was saying that when he watched the NBA Finals uh, this past summer as a spectator, that he felt, hey, if I was on the team, they would have won the championship because you looked at that specific matchup against the Bucks, where, you know, Giannis was doing things that he normally does, and DeAndre Ayn was getting in foul trouble. What if they had an extra big man as an insurance policy to account for the fact that DA is getting in foul trouble and uh, Dario Sarge, Sarge is out for an injury. And maybe in today's NBA, a lot of teams don't want a coveted big man, but the Suns have shown that you don't have to always go with where the trends are. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of it is based off of skills and matchups. So I don't think objectively there is a quote-unquote weakness with this team. Um, but again, it falls under some of the conventional things of how well can they stay healthy and how well can they, uh, you know, keep everyone having that strong buy-in. And even with some, you know, adversity to open the season, the one and three start, getting everyone's best start uh, shot after coming off the finals run. And, you know, the, the allegations from the owner, Robert Sarver, hovering over the organization, they've had their blinders on and they've had a really good workman-like mentality to, to not worry about those things and focus on basketball. And so far it's paid off. And it's been amazing their ability to compartmentalize over the course of the season, and uh, the record shows it. Mark, appreciate it as always. Mark Medina with us from NBA.com. Good to talk to you, and happy holidays. Right back at you. Happy holidays, and be well and safe.